Hello, <clears throat> I'm Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional therapist for 31 years, and before I began that, I began studying interpersonal communication. It's always been a fascination of mine. Uh, I've been studying it uh, for at least 40 years, and I have gained a great deal of experience at judging that most people, college educated or not, don't know how to communicate effectively. They are content with communicating, communicating at perhaps 50% of the effectiveness they could achieve. I want to create a series of videos <clears throat> that pass on to you a digest of what I've learned in my 40 plus years of studying interpersonal communication. This particular video is a way of introducing this subject and I want to summarize for you what I propose are six essential requisites. If you want to be an effective communicator, <clears throat> meaning if you want to consistently get your communication needs filled and help your communication partners fill their needs equally, <clears throat> here's what you need. The first thing you need is knowledge um, about your personality. In my experience as a therapist, many people are unaware that their personality is really composed of a group of subcells, which relate essentially to a, a group of different regions in your brain. Your personality is composed of subcells like the players in an orchestra or, or on a sports team. Each subself has got a specialty. The dynamics among your subcells are just the same as among people. But the reason you need to know this in order to be an effective communicator, you need to know about something called your true self, who makes really wise decisions in all situations, and a false self, which frequently makes unwise decisions and behaviors. You need to understand this concept. In a moment, I'll tell you why. So you need knowledge about how normal personalities are made and how they operate. You can find this knowledge in Lesson 1 in my nonprofit educational website. You can also find that out in the related Lesson 1 videos. Here's a playlist of these videos. The second group of knowledge, body of knowledge, that you need in order to be an effective communicator, I propose that you need to be able to describe and apply seven specific communication skills. My long experience is I have never met one person, college educated, PhD, masters, bachelors, who could name these seven skills, partly because they have an obsessed over communication as I have for 40 years. You need to know these skills, what they are, when to use them, and how to use them. <clears throat> you can gain this knowledge by studying lesson two in my nonprofit website, and or you can gain much of the knowledge, not all, but much, by studying the related Lesson 2 videos on YouTube. Here's the playlist to those videos. So, you need to know about personalities, and true self and false self. You need to know seven communication skills. Another requisite, once you've done that, use the first of the seven skills, which is awareness to be aware of these four things. <clears throat> Are you, in, in any important communication, be aware who's running your life? Is it your true self or is it a false self? You'll do best if your true self is in charge. Lesson one shows you how to do that. But a requisite for effective communication is you need to know is your true self in charge? You also need to know, is my partner's true self in charge, or are they being governed by a false 
self. That will determine the nature of your communication. The next thing you need to be aware of, this is a requisite, why are you communicating? There are five specific reasons that human beings communicate. If you can't name them, you need to learn them. You can in lesson two. But I propose that in order to communicate effectively, you need to be able to say, what do I need and what does my partner need? How can we both get our communication needs met well enough at this time? So you need to be aware who's running my life and what do I need and what does he or she need? Um, you also need to be aware of your attitude about your communication partner. In my experience, there are three options. Um, people are unconscious of having an attitude of my needs and my dignity are worth more than yours, I'm one up on you, or my needs and my dignity are less than yours, I'm one down to you, or we are people of equal dignity and worth at this time, and your needs and my needs are of equal importance to me. You need to be aware of your attitude. Is it an attitude of mutual respect or not? If it is, that's a sign that probably your true self is running your show, is ruling your communication and your life. If you have either a one-up attitude or a one-down attitude, it's likely that a false self is controlling you, which means you should lower your expectation of the outcome of your communication. The last requisite, of the sixth requisite, I've just named five, the sixth and last, if you find yourself in conflict a conflict is when your opinion or your needs clash with your partner. Adult or child, you need something different than what they, they need, or you perceive your, your perception is different, or your values are different. You think uh, chewing with your mouth is clothed, is important, I don't. That's a values difference. You need to be aware of your own personal bill of rights. As a dignified person, you have a group of rights. I won't go into them here, but if you want a detailed example of an effective personal bill of rights, see this article in my nonprofit educational website. Once you look at that article, I encourage you to form your own bill of rights. It's the basis for effective assertion with other people. Assertion is the basis of effective problem solving. If this sounds complicated, um, it's okay. Once you get the knack of this, it becomes a habit. You don't even have to think about it. So here's a recap. I propose you can learn to be a more effective communicator. To do that, you need six things. You need knowledge of personality subcells and how to spot a true self and a false self. You need knowledge of seven communication skills. The first of those skills is awareness. Once you know about awareness and are developing it, you need to become aware who's in charge in important communications, your true self, or a false self. You need to be aware of the process that's going on in and between you two communicators. Particularly, you need to be aware of what do I need? Why am I communicating? Why are you communicating? How can we both get our needs met well enough? That's a fourth requisite. A fifth requisite is to be aware of your attitude towards your partner, especially in stressful or conflictual interactions. What you want to strive for is an attitude of mutual respect. 
if you either feel superior or inferior to your partner. Probably means a false self is running you and you need to lower your expectation of the outcome of your communication. The last requisite you need when you are in stressful or conflictual um, interactions, I propose that a requisite you need is to have evolved and be able to access a personal bill of rights. I've given you links to each one of these. I hope you will follow up on what you've just learned. Learn more about these requisites and give yourself permission to learn them and practice them and then enjoy the results. Become a more effective communicator and in case you're a parent, teach what you're learning to your kids. Enjoy.